You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. This week, we are talking about sin. We are talking about how sin is a break or a wound in the relationship between us and another person or us and God. Talked about the story of Judas, of how he was given the responsibility of taking care of the money given to Jesus's public ministry and how little sins of stealing that money led to a much bigger sin where he was willing to be paid to betray Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at the next part of Judas's story. And this part begins at the Last Supper. I always think that it is remarkable that the Last Supper, where Jesus instituted the Eucharist, where he really pours out so much beautiful teaching for his apostles, right? He begins with washing their feet and then speaking in such a beautiful way about his relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. The Last Supper is a beautiful moment where he had an intimate moment of teaching with his closest followers. And yet, one of those men sitting at the table had already been paid to betray him. And Jesus, who knew all that was going to be happening to him, he knew this. So that's a remarkable thing to reflect on. And in a way, it's really good news for us. And I mean that because who out there is perfect? Who has ever gone to Mass to where we celebrate this Last Supper? Who has ever gone there and been perfectly clean from sin. Now, if you're raising your hand saying, yes, I've gone to mass perfect, then you're a liar because we're all sinners. Sometimes I even yell or do something really mean right as I'm walking into mass, right? We all enter the sacrifice of the mass as sinners. And so the fact that even at that moment when Jesus was instituting this, that he allowed a sinner to be present there, Well, it gives me hope for myself. The other thing that I find remarkable is that in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, someone will betray me. And of course, all the disciples are like, who, who, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me, right? And what does Jesus say? He says, the one who will betray me is the one who will dip his bread into the bowl with me. Now, I always thought that was a little bit confusing, but think about it this way. He's allowing someone to betray him who he is having such an intimate relationship with. Now, if you ever go to a restaurant and you eat out of the same plate with someone, well, that means you have a really tight relationship with them. Maybe they're your sibling or your parent or your best friend, right? We don't do that with strangers. We don't do that with people we don't like. It is a really close relationship if you're eating out of the same plate, So Jesus is saying, I am opening myself up. I am being very, very friendly, very loving toward this person who will betray me. Again, that's that's hard to know that Jesus, that he was betrayed by someone that close to him. But it's also good news for us. Every time we we put something before Jesus, every time we forget to pray or forget to think of him or deny him in some small way, we're betraying him in a very real way. And yet Jesus is still saying, standing there saying, I'm not going to turn you away. I'm not going to say no to having a close relationship with you because we see how close he allowed Judas to get to him. So tomorrow we're going to talk about the big moment of betrayal, the agony in the garden. But I just want you to really reflect on how close Judas and Jesus were, that they had a close relationship. Judas was not only one of the 12, but he had a close relationship with Jesus and Jesus allowed that to happen, even knowing that he would betray him. Likewise, he knows that we will betray him in big and small ways throughout our life. And yet he's willing to be hurt. 
He's willing to be hurt because that is how much he loves us. And so I hope that offers you just a little bit more motivation to make those plans to go to confession so that we can clean up those little sins and have an even better, truer, more real relationship with Jesus. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more note. We hope to journey with you through Lent with our Jesus tree. Two versions. One goes through the Gospel of Matthew. One goes through the Gospel of John. If you are wanting to grab any supplies for Lent, we are quickly approaching our shipping deadline. So if you want to explore our materials for Lent, please check the notes in this podcast episode. And we hope that you and your family have a very holy and fruitful Lent. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit SpokeStreet.com.